some of our subscribers, people who've like talked to us, sent us questions in a context that is not American. How do you then get this courage to be okay with stepping outside that boundary of norms? Uh, what sociologists will tell you is basically there's basically two different types of societies. It's what's called guilt-based cultures versus shame-based cultures. Mm -hmm. For you know most cultures in the world today, um, I guess the bad news is they're either you know guilt or shame. Sometimes they're a blend of the, a blend of the two, but like they, they do tend to fall out as, as guilt-based or shame-based. Um, you know, generally, stereotypically, uh, Western cultures are guilt-based. Uh, Eastern mm -hmm. cultures, Asian cultures are. Uh, uh, shame-based. What's the difference? Um, Guilt-based culture, um, right, um, is basically if I if basically I do something wrong, like I feel terrible, like about myself within myself. It's like Calvinism is like the extreme form of this. It's like I have just this constant gnawing guilt, right? right? And in fact, actually, in the West, there will be this kind of sometimes you get in this kind of debate over whether like Protestants have like Calvinist guilt, uh, you know, Catholics have Catholic guilt, you know, Jews have Jewish guilt, like they, you know. But it's all guilt. Like it's it's all this sort of it's this like inwardly determined sense uh, of unworth um, and, uh, and and failure that has this pros and cons. We'll, we'll come back to that one. The, the other one is shame based culture. Again, stereotypically, generally Asian based cultures, right? Shame based culture is because, as you said, it's sort of it's how you feel in the context of all of the people you feel like you have obligations to, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so and and how are you representing all of those people? And so how are you representing your family? How are you representing your country? How are you represent you know society? Right you know, at, what, at whatever level that is. And, and there you, you often get in this concept of like, you know, face and gaining face and losing face. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and literally like, you know, when it goes bad, it's like shame in my family, shame in my ancestors, mm -hmm. shame in my country, shame in my culture. And, and the repercussion there is basically yeah. you get ostracized from society. Yeah. So this is the thing, like guilty people, like, and, you know, because I come from a guilt based culture, like you can walk around all day feeling absolutely miserable about yourself and still kind of function like you can still go to the store. You can still like hang out at a right. you, you, you're, you're miserable in, inside yourself. Right. And, and, and actually the degenerate for, for founders, the degenerate version of guilt based culture that a lot of founders go through is they feel terrible about themselves. Um, they feel terrible about the job they're doing. They feel terrible about what's going to happen, but they, they can't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they can't tell anybody because they don't want they don't want to basically let on that they have this level of kind of crippling sort of self, you know, basically self self-loathing, self-hatred, you know, self uh, lack of self-confidence, um, you know, because, you know, so in, in a Western culture, somebody goes around and says that, you know, everybody else is like, wow, I feel bad for you. But now I know I don't want to work with you because that, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I don't want to join mm -hmm. your startup because, you know, right. God, you feel you feel terrible about it. Why would I feel good about it? There is literally a phrase in Hindi which basically translates to what will people think? It's almost like there's a circle and you always have to stick within that circle. You cannot step out. How do you get over it? This is the tough one. Um, you know, let me start by saying, look, you're going to be running a risk either way. In either culture, you'll be running a risk, right? Because in a guilt-based culture, you're going to be running the risk. You're going to feel bad about yourself. In a shame-based mm -hmm. culture, you're going to feel like you're disgracing your, your, your family or your society. So th like, th there, there is risk. And you know, there is some level of just like, it's just flat out risk that you have to take on. Um, you know, the, the best book that I've, I've read on this topic is uh, there's this book called The Courage to be Disliked, um, which is this really interesting book. Uh, it's written by these two Japanese uh, writers. One's a philosopher and the other, I think, is a writer. It's very significant that it's, it's, it's Japanese. It's a Japanese book. It's written by Japanese authors coming from, from Japanese culture. Uh, but the philosopher um, who, who co-wrote it um, is an expert actually in two very interesting things. Uh, one is a field of psychology called Adlerian uh, uh, psychology, named after this psychologist, Alfred Adler, who was a contemporary of Freud, who had a very different point of view than Freud. And then uh, it turns out this philosopher is also an expert in the Greek philosophy of Stoicism. Um, hmm. and, and, and basically, Adlerian psychology is like the psychological version of Stoicism is the way to think about it. And so kind of think, if you're familiar with Stoicism, think Marcus hmm. Aurelius uh, or uh, Seneca or people like that, right, which is sort of like you know, for, well, for people who haven't heard about Stoicism, it's basically, it's an ancient Greek philosophy that basically has to do with how do you function in an uncertain and dangerous world, right, without basically mm -hmm. having a psychological breakdown? How do, you, how do you basically handle adversity? How do you, you know, continue to function in the face of adversity, uh, you know, including extreme adversity, right, including, mm -hmm. you know, de including death and deaths of family members and so forth. So anyway, so it's, it's, it's sort of these Adlerian psychology plus Stoicism is sort of this match pair um, of concepts. And then what's interesting about that is he, he kind of articulates this sort of concept of, and it's literally about the courage to be disliked, about what it means to kind of buck society and put mm -hmm. yourself at that level of risk. And he does it from an East, from an Eastern perspective. He does mm -hmm. it from the perspective of Japanese culture, which is of course, extremely shame-based. What's interesting about the book is it's, it's kind of a, at least I read it. It's, it's like, it's an exhortation 
like for a Japanese audience is written as like an exhortation to become more assertive. Mm -hmm. Right. And he, cause he literally says in there, like you need to become more assertive. You need to be more contrarian. You need to be willing to buck society. You need, mm -hmm. and you need, you know, you need to do that. And by the way, society needs to change, right. To, to, to actually let that happen. And so it, it's provocative that way. And then the other thing is just super interesting about it is it was a huge hit. Um, and so the, the way at least the authors tell the story is yes, this is why we wrote it is because kind of people need to know, mm -hmm. right. That there's a kind of different way to do this. I, I don't actually think shame-based cultures have a particular like, you know, inhibition entrepreneurship because I am very familiar with the problems that arise from trying to do it in a guilt-based culture, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is, it's a great way to feel terrible about yourself. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, I, it's a, it's a good book to kind of process through this. I don't think there are easy answers on it. I think it's, it's, you know, it's the old, you know, like there's this pattern. It's like, you know, the, the, you know, the nail that sticks up is the one that gets pounded. You know, that there's a, the, yeah. this thing called tall poppy syndrome in some societies where, you know, it's just literally a you know, symbolism for the tall poppy gets, you know, gets, yeah, gets or gets the angry tweets on Twitter or gets the angry tweets on Twitter. Exactly. <laughs> um, but look, there's a certain kind of person who has to do this. Like they, they're never going to be happy if they don't subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, the good time show by Arthi and Shriram.